Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting system of equations. We have x plus y plus z equals 18, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 108. I feel like I might have done this problem earlier. I apologize if I did, and this is probably going to look a little different because I'll talk about additional things. Anyways, let me know if you find the same video. Okay, so why is this called an interesting system? First of all, you'll see in a little bit. So we're going to be talking about a couple things. First, the solution to the system. Second, we're going to talk about a general form because this can be generalized. Okay, so I'll show you some uh, problem types that can go uh, hand in hand with these types of problems. So let's start with the first system. So what was my equation? X plus Y plus Z equals 18. And then the sum of squares is 108. So I'm going to start by squaring both sides. That gives me the following. Hopefully you know the multinomial or trinomial theorem. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared plus 2xy plus 2xz plus 2yz. You can go ahead and kind of take out a 2 here and write it as xy, xz, yz. And that's equal to 324. Okay. And then now x squared plus y squared plus z squared. This was given as 108. If you subtract this number from 324, you get 216. Half of that is going to be 108. Uh-oh. That looks familiar, doesn't it? xy plus xz plus yz equals 108. But we also know that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 108. What does that mean? <laughs> this implies that these two quantities are equal. So if two things are equal to the same thing, then they're equal. That's a basic principle, right? Which is very helpful in a lot of cases. So we can safely say that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to xy plus xz plus yz. Now, how is that helpful? We have three variables, but two equations. That's why this is an interesting system, but it's also a special system. That's why we're going to talk about the general form. But how do you solve this? And what does this mean, right? Well, we're going to multiply both sides by two first. You'll see in a little bit. My goal is to put everything on the same side and complete the squares. And when I do, something mathematical is going to happen, right? Mathematical. Uh, so let's do it. 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 2z squared minus 2xy minus 2xz minus 2yz. Now my goal is to complete the square. So can I extract perfect squares from here? And that will be perfect. Now, yes, I can because think about it. Negative 2xy needs x squared and y squared. Think about it. So I can kind of write this as x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So I used one of each of these, right? So I still have some left. But then I can go ahead and follow up with y squared, but I don't have any xy or 2xy, but I do have yz or 2yz, so I can use that. And that requires a z squared, which is nice because I have two z squared, I can use one of them. But now I have one z squared left and I have, I use this, right? I use these two. So I have this one left, which is minus 2xz. And of course, I also have uh, 1x squared left, which completes the picture. Yay. Now, notice that this is actually a sum of what? Three squares, yes. X minus Y squared plus Y minus Z squared. And we used this trick before, you'll probably remember. This is a very common trick that's used, especially for math competition, contests, or Olympiad problems. So a good intro. And from here, we get something nice. Of course, X, Y, Z are real. I guess we should say that, right? If not, then there are infinitely many complex solutions to this, right? Obviously, you can call these different variables like I don't know, z squared, w squared, and u squared equals zero. And then you can kind of isolate the sum and then square root both sides. And obviously, you're going to get infinitely many solutions from there. Anyways, so if x, y, z are real, then all of these have to be zero because the only way to get a sum of zero is either by adding zeros or positives and negatives. But none of these can be negative. 
no square is negative, something to remember. Of course, we're talking about real numbers. So this means x equals y equals z. But wait a minute, does that give us a solution? Yes, it does. Because remember, we knew that x plus y plus z is equal to 18. If they're all equal, then they're all equal to 6 because their sum is supposed to be 18. Or if you go by the squares, you're still going to get 6. But wait a minute, can x, y, z be negative 6? No, because it doesn't satisfy the first equation, and system means both equations have to be satisfied. Make sense? I hope it does. So basically what we did was evaluate it x, y plus x, z plus y, z, kind of like a Vieta's formula sort of thing. And then, of course, we don't know x, y, z, right? But we could go into that. And by the way, there's a really nice identity. Let me share with you real quick, if you don't mind. If x plus y plus z is equal to 0, then x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed minus 3xyz is also going to be 0 because this contains a factor of x plus y plus z. And again, we did a lot of problems with this identity too. What does this have to do with that? When you factor this expression, hopefully you'll see the connection. Anyways, so we got the xyz value, so we're happy. Let's go ahead and go to the next bullet point, which is the general form. Okay, so here's what the problem looks like. So we could be posing a question like, okay, suppose x plus y plus z is equal to k, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to m. And the question is, if this system has a unique solution, an ordered triple, and just a unique one single solution, what are the values of k and m, right? So we can kind of go off of the same methods and hopefully come up with something. Let me tell you though, without further ado, I'm gonna give you the secret formula and then we'll check that real quick, okay? So if x plus y plus z is equal to 3a and x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 3a squared, then this system will have a single solution. That's why you're not gonna need another equation to solve a system in three variables. All you need is two because this is a special system of equations. Does that make sense? And I can quickly explain why, where this comes from. Obviously, we can do the same thing we did with factoring and identities, but we can also think of it this way. If x, y, z are all equal, then we can just set x equal to a, like use a parameter. And then of course, the sum will be 3a and the sum of the squares is just gonna be 3a squared because it's kind of like a squared plus a squared plus a squared and that is equal to 3a squared. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.